Good morning, everyone, and welcome to TQ's International Reopening Update. It's wonderful that you've been able to join us this morning. And the team here at TQ are really excited about sharing our information with you. I'd like to commence this morning by acknowledging the traditional owners of country and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters, culture and community. We pay our respects to elders past, present and future. Uh, to begin today, I have the absolute pleasure to hand over to Minister Sterling Hinchliffe, who'd like to start, say a few words to welcome you today. So thank you, Minister Hinchliffe. Thanks, Leanne, and, and it's wonderful to be talking about international uh, marketing again. Um, it's been a positive fortnight for our industry. In and great to be now working towards that long term recovery that we're also uh, keen to see. In 2019, we welcomed around uh, 2.8 million international visitors. Uh, they were 10% of the state's overall visitation and 23% of visitor expenditure. For some regions like Tropical North Queensland and the Whit Sundays, international visitors were one quarter of the visitors. And in some cases, TNQ and Brisbane, up to 35% of visitor expenditure. Now we have been so resilient and made the very best uh, of Queenslanders and a broader domestic market uh, uh, in Australia as much as we could in the past two years. Uh, but now we can focus on the return of these high value travellers and that's a great thing for industry. Um, as our TQ specialists will share today, uh, we know that we're not going to see the floodgates uh, you know, open. Uh, it will take time to rebuild this market. Um, but I encourage you to utilise and support, uh, utilise the support and the resources that TQ have to make sure that you're set up for international visitors and use opportunities to get into markets as they open. Uh, the Queensland Government announced uh, one week ago today a uh, $200 million joint investment in supporting international flights for the four biggest uh, airports in the state over the next four years. Uh, our $100 million investment from the state um, uh, uh, partnering with a matching amount from the four international airports. It's a great uh, opportunity and a great war chest that we've got out there in the, 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 the marketplace uh, over and above other jurisdictions in Australia and indeed other airports and destinations globally. And the Palaszczuk government, uh, this, this joins part of what the Palaszczuk government has done in terms of uh, committing uh, more than $1.1 billion in support of uh, tourism hospitality operators through the pandemic, including the, the 10 million in, in the last budget to kickstart domestic aviation connectivity to Australia's favourite uh, holiday experiences here in Queensland. So friends, we are committed to continuing the support for the long-term recovery of the tourism industry, and there'll be more conversations we have around that uh, in, in the future. But I look forward to working with you to do that. And I hope you will enjoy the webinar today. Um, and I'll pass back to you, Leanne. Thank you very much, Minister, for that great welcome and update of everything that the government is doing to support our industry at this crucial time. I believe that uh, Assistant Minister Michael Healy is also on the line today, so welcome, Michael. Great to have you with us as well. Um, so as we go through the webinar today, we are taking questions and your feedback through the chat. Um, so put those, your comments through the Q&A function today. Uh, show us which questions you'd really like to answer by liking them. And if your question does go out answered by the team, we'll endeavour to respond post the event. So make sure to include your name because it actually comes up as being anonymous. And uh, if uh, you'd like a response, we will respond to you directly. So here we are, aren't we excited? So the team here at TQ and globally is so excited that our borders are starting to open. Um, and uh, we're really pleased to be able to give you this update today as to our approach and share that information with you. And as I said, we really love your feedback and input too. Um, 
as the minister said, we're going to do everything we can to build back quicker. However, we do need to be mindful that everything has indicated over these last two years that it is going to be a slow, slower rebuild, slower than we would love. We'd want it all to be back to 2019 figures by tomorrow if we could, or by Monday at least when the borders open. So we will work hard on that, but we do need to be realistic that it's a the, all the data has told us it's a 24, 25 um, build but to get back to those levels. And we want to use our resources in the most effective way to support you for that rebuild. Just want to update you a little on recruitment. Um, as you probably aware, if you're working closely with us in the international markets, we are currently recruiting for two country managers to support our teams in the Western markets, country manager for the USA and Europe. I'm pleased to be able to tell you that that recruitment is going very, very well. And we're just in the final stages of that recruitment. And hopefully over the next few weeks, we will be able to update you uh, on that and rest assured I just also wanted to assure the industry um, that whilst recruitment sometimes takes a little while to ramp up we will be ensuring that our teams are resourced to the levels required to be able to support you through this time um, so if you have any concerns on that front please be sure to reach out to your regional tourism organizations who we're working super closely with and i have to shout out to the partnership with our rto partners it's been magnificent through this time as we start this um, reopening phase or also directly to us and and your TQ contacts that you regularly deal with in your in your regions so um, that's enough for me for today i'm very pleased now um, to hand over to Michael, who will um, take you through what we're going to, or take you through the content today. And what he's going to take you through with members of his team is our reopening approach, our consumer market insights, an aviation update, a trade update, our activity roadmap, and probably the most important thing that uh, you want us to get to is how can you get involved? How, what do we need from you to help us make sure that uh, we are supporting you in the best way possible? So thank you again for joining us today and I'll now hand over to Michael. Thanks, Leanne. Thank you, Minister, and good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for getting out of bed um, and being here at eight o'clock on a Friday morning. I know it's no doubt the end of a, another long week for everybody, but hopefully it's the end of what is a, a very exciting week as well as we move into next week and the 21st of February uh, with the opening of our borders um, for bilateral quarantine free travel, which is a real mouthful, um, to many of our historical key source markets. To help us understand what that looks like, um, we've been working to this guide and, and we really refer to it as our, our ready reckoner, just to get a real understanding of who Queensland and Australia will open to and is open to at this particular point in time. Uh, the fantastic news, of course, is for particular working holiday maker and student visa classes, um, we have two way quarantine free entry open and it has been in place for some time. And also alongside that, some um, very strong uh, initiatives and stimulus from both a state uh, and a federal level to um, facilitate the fast track of the restart of those segments in particular. From a leisure perspective, it's also um, very pleasing to see the green, you know, the two green ticks there, uh, and that's a green tick for both inbound and return travel to those key source markets. And whilst we recognise there's not every source market and every historical source market that we have uh, we have relied on um, for our our key international uh, leisure travellers, it is a significant proportion of them. But we do have to acknowledge that um, a couple of our key large source markets historically in terms of China and New Zealand um, are still um, not open to two way quarantine free travel. But it is really pleasing to see um, you know, the number of the key eastern and also uh, the western markets in particular being open to that two way quarantine free travel. This particular guide is something that we're monitoring daily. Um, we're updating on a regular basis and it's a reference that um, can be found in, on our corporate website as well if you ever need um, to, to source it. We are, we're hearing that there's a positive aspect and potential further announcements from destinations like Japan and Malaysia to come. Um, and as soon as we know more about those announcements and hopefully they're not very far away, we'll continue to keep you informed of what that means. 
But for us, a couple of the key things that really started has been having a really um, planned out and, and phased marketing approach. For so long now, we've been working in this pre-opening phase. It feels like it's been a long time coming in terms of the shift from that pre-opening approach, which is all about being keeping Queensland top of mind um, and, and active in those markets and really maintaining those key core trade, aviation and partner relationships uh, to being able to move into where we've been for the last few weeks in the opening um, phase of that, where it's 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 celebrating the announcement, you know, celebrating and extending a warm invitation back to Queensland for many of our our key source markets. And now we're we're at the tipping point as over the weekend and into Monday we move from that opening phase into the two way quarantine free travel opportunity with many of those key traditional source markets. And with that, you know, our goal is to is to be opportunistic and drive conversion. It really is about what are those quick conversion opportunities that we can stand up? How can we facilitate and maximize a restart uh, and a reopening of, for our industry and get international travelers looking and excited about returning to Queensland as quickly as they possibly can? As Leanne highlighted, you know, when we know it's going to be a staged and a progressive approach, but we're really keen to make sure that we do everything we possibly can uh, to accelerate that growth. You know, whilst the, the, the forecast may say 24, 25, the ambition that we all need to have is to make that happen sooner. And that's what our activity is designed to do. And all the work we've been doing in preparation is really geared to make happen. So next week, we move into that two way quarantine free travel approach with many of our key source markets. We start significant marketing activity and partnership activity um, implementation, all built around the key message to those markets that you're good to go to Queensland. They've been waiting for that message for so long and they tell us that that is a message that really resonates strongly with them. The idea that they're now good to go to Queensland is something that they're celebrating and they're really looking forward to doing. Over time, once we move past that initial reopening approach, we'll head into the post opening phase where it is about shifting and leaning more into that purposeful brand direction around the idea of travel for good um, and building long term sustainable growth. Uh, back into our markets. And again, a, a phase that we're really looking forward to. And we know that there's a lot of pent up demand internationally um, for the type of experiences that Queensland can offer um, into the future for, for those key source markets and those travellers that we're looking to attract here. What happened? As soon as we got to that initial opening phase, we stood up a whole heap of activity really quickly with media releases going out into all of those key source markets announcing uh, the reopening of our borders. We were very active on social media and translating that social media into all the key languages. We updated Queensland.com with those key reopening messages and we made sure that all of our partners were well aware of the fact that Queensland was reopening its borders to international arrivals and celebrating the fact that we would love to re-engage with them and start those meaningful discussions that they've been really waiting for these border announcements to happen uh, to be able to actively work with us on. So that's been really exciting. And off the back of that, we saw great coverage. Uh, we saw fantastic coverage out of all those key source markets. Um, in that initial announcement that Queensland was going to open in the coming weeks, you know, it was picked up across the globe. Um, I think our, our, a couple of our um, international directors report the fact that it was a real, it was a trending story across many, many of the different news outlets. So, you know, a welcome piece of good news for those travellers around the world who love Australia but have been kept out of it for a couple of years. And as then as we moved on to the second announcement about the 21st, we saw a second round of PR and media pickup, um, which was fantastic. It was immediate um, and our trade partners reported off the back of that second announcement, a real uptick in not only inquiry, but also some bookings as well. And that's that's really encouraging. Um, their feedback is that in some instances, yes, that initial inquiry has been driven by VFR, um, which is understandable with so many people keen to reconnect after this time, but they've also seen really strong inquiry for um, holiday and leisure um, travel into Queensland itself um, and some really interesting insights about the type of experiences and the type of trips that people are looking to plan as well, which I know Rowena will touch on in her, her presentation um, a little bit later on. One of the things that we've been really conscious of monitoring and, and being aware of is that there is no doubt that over the last couple of years, there has been some shifts, shifts in consumer behaviour, some significant change in respect to our aviation landscape, um, and also the pandemic has had an impact on the trade. 
Um, so we would like to be able to provide you with a bit of context around that. And Rowena and I, over the next few slides, we'll just step through some of those insights, give you the opportunity to be aware and understand what they are, and also enable us to be able to recognise that we may need to shift shape and look at the way we do things a little bit differently going forward, just in order to be able to manage the different shape of the market as we do look to recover. One of the big trends, um, I think, is this idea, and it's been well reported, that um, you know the, the greatest of all trips, the GOAT mindset, is creeping in. And it's, it's forecast to be 2022 travel's biggest trend. The idea that um, you know, with so much, so much time spent in isolation, so much time spent in lockdown, so much time unable to travel, that people are really looking forward to having their greatest of all trip. Now, that greatest of all trip doesn't necessarily mean uh, exploring the globe um, and taking off for months and months and months, but it means having a trip that is really meaningful and purposeful, something that they've been potentially wanting to do for a long period of time, where they've had it on a bucket list or it's been the top of mind thing that they just wanted to make happen. And the reports are and the insights are that they're the type of things that people are going to look forward to straight away. And I think fantastically, Queensland's in a great position uh, to be able to deliver against much of that pent up demand that these travellers are craving. Um, you know, they're craving that commitment, um, contentment and mental well-being, you know, the opportunity to just get out there and and relax and and look after them themselves and their mind and have a have a really relaxing um, break from the the stresses and the the issues that have been around us throughout this pandemic. Um, they're looking for excitement and exhilaration and gosh, who knows anywhere better than Queensland to be able to get that. Um, they're looking for those experiences that do get the do get the heart pumping and the blood rushing through the body um, to feel alive again. Um, and I think that's a great opportunity for us to tap into as a destination because we offer so many experiences and so you know, so much of our wonderful state you know, delivers against that opportunity for these travellers. And then ultimately they're looking for gratification. Uh, they're looking for that sense of just how grateful they are to be able to get out there and experience the world again. Um, and again, I think we, we offer you know, so much in terms of being able to deliver against those needs and what travellers are craving. Um, they're getting their go in many different ways. You know, there's a number of trends that are evolving and there's a number of trends that are coming through uh, across the globe, just in respect to how people are going to look to holiday in the future. And these trends and insights are really important for us when we think about planning, when we think about developing itineraries, and when we think about the type of messages we put out through our marketing channels, our social media channels, the earned media approaches we look to take. Um, and how we line up and look to meet those needs of these future travellers. You know, they're looking to scrap the schedule. Um, it's you know, potentially wanting that, that impromptu opportunity and those impromptu experiences. There's no doubt that a planned holiday is a great holiday, but the unexpected and the impromptu is also something that people are looking forward to as part of their travel experiences. Um, we've all read and we've all seen and we've all taken on board the fact that you know as a consequence of the pandemic people have been saving you know with the inability to travel um with potential you know lockdowns and everything else there are segments and there are opportunities out there where people have absolutely been been saving for that splurgecation that's a wonderful word but that splurgecation is something they're looking forward to taking um getting out there spending big taking that trip of a lifetime and potentially upgrading their experience. So something for us to really think about and consider in terms of the offerings that we have and the way we market to them is providing those opportunities to add a little extra to what may have been you know, the traditional itinerary as well. The idea of immersion to discover um, you know, is about just really getting in and deeply immersing themselves in the destination. One of the key insights that a couple of our international trade partners have, uh, have provided to us is the fact that you know, they, they see people spending more days in destination, you know, particularly when they travel long haul internationally. Um, what was once maybe a two or three night stay could end up being a four or five night stay in a destination um, as people are really looking now to immerse themselves and spend more time in destination when they do travel. They're going after those sensations. Um, they're really looking for um, new tastes and places, you know, they're yearning for something a little bit different, a little bit unexpected and a little bit exciting to go and explore. Um, and ultimately, it's all about unfiltered enjoyment for them. Um, you know, a successful post-pandemic travel experience for many um, will be not defined by 
by by the way they're represented on social media, um, but more so defined by just what a traveler's looking for to get out of those holidays. With all of this, you know, comes a couple of challenges um, and some some things that we've also noted globally that uh, are considerations for us to take into account. Um, American national parks uh, are reporting record visitation, and I think we've seen the same here from our own um, national parks in terms of visitors really seeking those nature based experiences and seeking to get back out and explore nature. Um, the American parks are, have coined the have coined the phrase smother nature um, as just so many people are looking to get back out there and immerse themselves in nature based experiences. The positive for us is we've got so many amazing natural um, and wonderful experiences for travelers to experience and enjoy that we can really meet again and tap into that demand that travelers globally have um, for a more immersive experience within nature itself. What else do we know? We know that the intention um, to travel to Australia is building. Um, Tourism Australia has been conducting their travel sentiment tracker throughout the course of the pandemic. And this last field work back in January, and it's peaked and you know, peaked and troughed across the period of the pandemic. Um, this last um, survey was at the peak of the Omicron strain. Um, and there were definitely declines in travel sentiment, both internationally and domestically. Um, we look forward to the numbers in, in February, just to see if there's been any change there. Um, but when you think about intention um, to travel internationally at this particular point in time, we see that the Singapore and the UK markets have really high intention to travel internationally within the next 12 months, which is really positive news for us. Um, South Korea and New Zealand are intending to travel internationally, but you know, there may be a little bit of a delayed response to them um, in that respect. Um, whereas the Japanese and USA markets are really starting to just think about what their international travel plans look like. And again, that's consistent with the feedback that we're receiving from our, our key trade and aviation partners internationally is where across the board and across the globe, as we move out of this Omicron wave, um, and the impacts of that sentiment to travel is rebuilding rapidly, um, which is really positive for us. What else we know is that again, throughout the pandemic, Australia's perceptions have wavered. They've gone up and down. I think it's fair to say that in the early days of the pandemic, Australia was held really high as a nation that was handling the pandemic well. That has again, you know, changed throughout the course and the way uh, through the course of the pandemic. And we do now find ourselves in a situation where in recent months, you know, the global view of Australia as a safe destination to travel to um, has declined a little bit, but that's in the context of the rest of the world as well. All countries across the globe have seen a similar trend um, in terms of the international market's perception of them at a point in time when they're at the peak of a particular wave of the pandemic. And again, I think our view on this is that these are short term. You know, this, this information here and this sense of is it safe to travel or not is very short term. And it's really related by the particular phase of the pandemic that each particular market is in at a point in time. So a market like Japan, which is you know, potentially showing um, less, yeah, less safe perception of travel to Australia, um, is representative of the fact that this survey was done at a point in time when Japan was just starting to feel the impacts of um, Omicron and therefore you know, potentially you know, impacted by what, what was happening in their own market and therefore perceiving international markets uh, in a different light. And we do expect, again, this data to change very quickly as all of these key source markets start to reopen. And also, as we start to deliver those really strong messages out there to the globe about just how wonderful it is and how safe it is to travel within Australia again as we look to our own reopening. Behind all of that, is the work we've been doing over the last couple of years around our own brand purpose for Queensland. Um, the travel for good purpose sits at the heart of our, our brand strategy, and that is built around the notion and the idea that travel is good for you as a person and also travel is good for the world. Um, at its simplest, it really means that by traveling, you're looking after yourself, your mind, your heart, and your soul, and your body at the same point in time. And you're also looking after the world. Um, Traveling sustainably is not just about looking after the environment when you travel, and I think a lot of people just just think about it in that in that that singular lens. Um, it also means constantly learning. Um, it means learning about the world. It means learning about our incredible ancient culture that we have in a destination here such as Queensland, and a true connection to land and place. Um, the Great Barrier Reef is just one example of what people are looking for in terms of that that world impact. You know, an experience of the Great Barrier Reef really does give people an opportunity to 
to understand so much more about um, ecotourism, about the impact of their actions um, in respect to uh, sustainability, but also about how to care for it and go home as a much better person. So this is why the idea of transformative travel um, is so important for us as a key pillar and anchor of our future strategy, but also so important as the world starts to reopen and recover from the pandemic as well. So we're pleased and we're really excited that we've been able to do this work, which dates back to the pre-pandemic period, um, and puts us in a really strong place to be able to talk to the world and take on the world with a really purposeful brand, brand approach that meets the needs of future travellers and gives us the opportunity to go on a journey together with you, the industry, um, to really carve out new experiences and, and new stories for travellers around the world to really re-energise and get them excited about Queensland as a destination again. I'm going to hand over to Rowena now to talk a little bit about some of those aviation and trade insights as well. Thanks, Michael. Good morning, everyone. And for those of you on the call who don't know me, I'm Rowena Wilkinson, the Distribution Development and Partnerships Director at TEQ, and it's a pleasure to be talking with you today. As you're all aware, the international aviation landscape has been decimated. But now with the clarity around reopening, we're really quickly working really quickly to establish an updated picture on the aviation landscape and identify opportunities to be able to share with you. Our aviation investment program will be led by Manny Gill, who takes up the role of the aviation strategic director position within the Department of Tourism, Innovation and Sport. Manny will work closely with our uh, airports and airlines to rebuild Queensland's interna international aviation routes. Tourism and Events Queensland role will be to lead the inbound marketing efforts in collaboration with our RTOs and airline partners to drive demand and frequency. A partnership approach to priority routes is to reinstate, grow and attract. The, amount, the announcement of the $200 million international aviation investment in partnership with the Queensland Government, our international airports and partners will be a great war chest to reinstate and grow services and attract new routes through to 2025. Priority routes are being identified now in conjunction with the airports. Domestic Connectivity remains key, utilising Sydney and Melbourne where needed or relevant as the Australian Gateway, as well as connectivity between key inter and interstate destinations for international travellers who will be still looking for multi-destinational itineraries. We'll be working collaboratively to influence carriers and to share insights from trade partners on future demand. Additionally, we'll be looking to ensure our activity is connected, ensuring that tactical aviation partnerships are accessible to be leveraged through our trade partners. There's no doubting that the aviation landscape is dynamic and it's expected to continue to be dynamic. The current schedules reference are guides only and subject to change. Airlines are looking to be responsive to demand. However, they still face their own challenges in standing up teams and restarting their operations. However, what we do know is really exciting. We know that the agents will increasingly have more choices and more options for clients. Emirates are talking about daily services from Dubai to Brisbane. Qatar are looking at increased daily services from March. Singapore Airlines have talked about the UK and Europe and anticipating uh, start dates into Cairns and Brisbane in late March. And this week, excitingly, we saw Scoot land on the Gold Coast after over 600 days for international travel. Looking at some of our trade insights, there is no doubt that trade partners remain critical to Queensland's tourism recovery and we're seeking and we're seeing a number of changing trends. Many consumers will use travel agents due to the assurance of the governance and protection of their funds, but people are more likely to book with a travel professional for their next holiday as they seek out expert help and advice with travel requirements to reduce the risk of travel. The move from travel agents to travel strat strategist. Travel strategist is a term that Virtuoso recently used with us as, as they are the new age of experts. Many agents are dealing with the catch up consumer trying to make multiple trips they've missed out on. So agents need to be more strategic in their planning, upgrading elements, managing multiple itineraries, uh, COVID protocols and bucket list destinations. OTAs have been designed to win in a post-COVID world. OTA strategies in the past have always been centered around strategic investments, acquisitions and expansions. But in the last two years, technology and personalization has significantly advanced the user experience, which has really boosted their appeal in some priority markets. And we expect to see this uh, come through in the next couple of years. 
Dynamic packaging will also blur the lines between package tours. One of the most exciting developments in the package tour space is the growth of tech connectivity in the industry. Third party pl platforms for bundling opens up a whole new world of plug and play upselling capabilities for travel suppliers and agents that might not have traditionally considered a package tour product. Skiff reports that many airlines over the last two years have seen this as a starting point from which to build significant ancill ancillary revenue streams to complement their unbundled retail strategies. This means in today's fast evolving landscape, especially for Queensland's, that airlines can add new routes immediately and by selling dynamic packages around the destination on launch. It's a really ex exciting space to be involved in um, and we look forward to seeing the continued trends emerge. I'll now pass back to Michael to talk to campaign activity. Thanks Rowena. Um, as you can hear, as you see there, you know, there has definitely been a change in the landscape from a trade and aviation perspective. It's been a key thing that we've been highly conscious of keeping on top of uh, and the role of our international directors and our key contacts in international markets within both aviation and trade has really helped us um, have a good feel for what that landscape is going to look like going forward and also enables us to have a strong sense of what we need to be doing right now in terms of developing and contracting those key partnerships where those opportunities exist and then also planning for next financial year as we look to uh, continue to develop and plan out our reopening and recovery efforts as well. From a creative perspective and a messaging perspective, the work that Tourism Australia has been doing is incredibly important for us to, to leverage and incredibly important in respect to signalling to the world that Australia firstly is open again but our opportunity then is how do we make sure that Queensland stands out in that very cluttered environment and the cluttered marketplace as we know globally there's more competition for the tourist dollar than there ever has been in the past. Excitingly we saw Tourism Australia launch their international reopening approach in key source markets this week. Their messaging is split across two key themes. Uh, come and say good day don't go small, go Australia, which are the examples you can see here, um, which will be rolled out in Germany, France, Italy and Canada, um, as well as the USA and UK. So very much a Western markets oriented message. Um, and then there's the secondary message of come and say good day, Australia is yours to explore, um, which was launched in Singapore and will also look to roll out across other Asian markets, including India, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Republic of Korea, Japan and greater China, um, as well as travel recommences and we hear more positive news about the reopening of those markets. These campaigns um, are being launched under the uh, there's nothing like Australia platform, something we're all very familiar with. It's been built off a lot of work that Tourism Australia has done over the last couple of years throughout the pandemic to understand those key brand codes and icons that international travellers really respond to from uh, an Australia point of view and to drive consideration for Australia and make sure that you know in this cluttered and, and competitive environment that we as we recover the consideration for Australia remains high. We understand how important it is to have that high consideration for the destination because without that driving conversion is very 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 difficult indeed. Coming behind that then is our own message you know in sync with the Go Australia platform, it's now time for us to tell the world that you're good to go to Queensland. We saw how, how good and how strong that message worked in our domestic market and the feedback from our international markets is exactly the same. They're telling us that the idea that you're good to go to Queensland is just quick, easy and something that can be grasped in a, in a moment, in a snapshot. And whilst this is not our long term approach, this is our key reopening message. This is the message that we just want to get out there quickly to those key international markets, our key trade and aviation partners, and make sure it's really well understood um, that you're good to go to Queensland, you're good to go to the Great Barrier Reef, you're good to go and experience the most incredible destination on earth. And with that, we've rolled out a whole host of activities and have more activity rolling out that really just brings that message to life. The campaign message easily works um, in those markets where it requires translation. But also we're hearing from many of those markets that it doesn't even require translation. It is so easily and well understood. It acts as an invitation to drive international bookings to travel to Queensland. And we're really aiming to reach and convert international travellers from markets with open borders and where travel is possible too. Sitting alongside that is our own media approach. 
Um, our own media approach is firstly to ensure that all of our activity is aligned to our global marketing reentry campaign. You know, that line up and making sure that everything is connected so as we're not you know, being wasteful and not, look, not missing out on opportunities is very, very important to us. With Australia's borders now open, we're seeing a strong appetite for travel features and an opportunity to capitalise on the media's interest. Uh, the team is focused, our international teams are focused on reigniting and strengthening our relationships with top tier media partners, um, including hosting media events in market. We've certainly seen a pick up in demand um, for familiar activity. We've seen a lot of requests come through for familiar activity and we're now starting to look to how we can activate that uh, in a COVID safe um, and proper manner as we look to reopen. I had the I had the fortune of going to Sydney yesterday to attend the Trav Media um, Marketplace. And I've got to say, I've never seen so much excitement from the 200 plus media and journalists in the room about the fact that not only Australia, but particularly Queensland was open again. They're so excited about the opportunity to just tell those stories and to you know, find those ways that we can deliver the message uh, back out to the world. Once borders are open, we'll drive consideration for Queensland by delivering um, more media for mills. I'd say more media for mills than we ever have before because we recognise just how important it is to get media back into destination and trade. Um, and in, that includes working with Tourism, Tourism Australia very closely on their um, IMHP opportunities as well. It's very much a partnership. We require the cooperation and the collaboration of Tourism Australia, ourselves and our RTO partners um, to make this happen um, because it's going to take a very strong concerted effort. And of course, our ongoing press office activity where we're constantly pitching editorial content aligned to those emerging media and consumer trends that we've talked about uh, to really ensure a dominant share of voice for Queensland. When we did our reopening and, and, and the UK market started to report on Queensland's and Australia's reopening a couple of weeks ago uh, through the Telegraph partnership that TA has in market there, we were really fortunate that Queensland you know, secured a number of key placements, a number of key announcements within that overall piece of activity. And that was through the hard work of our team in market there to keep those relationships active and make sure that Queensland uh, was top of mind when it came to that Australia reopening opportunity and messaging. This one is a lot of information and I'm not going to spend too much time laboring on it, but I just want to make sure and we just wanted to share our overarching plan on a page for you know, the upcoming marketing activity in those key priority and open markets in the short term. You know, this is the short term plan. This is the activity uh, that is in place now that is either contracted or about to be contracted in our key international source markets that are open to two way travel. Uh, the difference between the green and the grey there is that the green indicates activity confirmed already and the grey indicates uh, activity that we're in the final stages of locking in and confirming either with key media or trade partners. Um, the plan itself has been developed in line with when markets reopen uh, for quarantine free travel. Key travel periods um, in particular, out of those key markets, we know that there is a cyclical nature to a number of these key markets. So whilst we are very focused on opportunistic conversion immediately, we're also conscious of meeting the demand around the key travel periods as well and in line with aviation capacity from those source markets too. Our priority has been to ensure we also align with Tourism Australia. Uh, and leverage their campaign and partnership activity as well, where they're investing strongly in these markets, will invest by, side by side with Tourism Australia in TQ-led trade and aviation activity to drive bookings and outcomes for Queensland too. Um, the border announcements have been key for us progressing these contract negotiations whilst our teams have been talking about and planning what the campaigns can look like for quite some time. With the border announcements came the certainty amongst our trade partners and our aviation partners to progress to contracting. And that's been you know, something that you know, they've required that confidence that Queensland is open to step forward and move into that contracting phase. So it's been a really nice uh, step to take. Um, we've also uh, changed our messaging and tactics for ongoing activity to this Queensland is good to go message as the markets open. And as we navigate this rebuilding phase, um, some timings and details may well move like, like we experienced in the domestic market as we went through our reopening phases. We have to take a very fluid um, and very flexible approach to this. Um, things will change, there's no doubt. There's no doubt and everybody's been talking about this reopening will have its ups and downs. It will be a little bit lumpy. It will be a little bit stop start, but you know, we're prepared. We've got the approach and we've got the mindset of being agile and flexible around these plans 
and we'll ensure that we provide the opportunity to keep you all updated on these plans and, and aware of those opportunities as they come to mind or as they you know, potentially change due to changing circumstances as well. Sitting alongside that activity, one of the key segments that we're working towards um, is the working holiday maker opportunity. Uh, with fully vaccinated working holiday makers allowed entry into Australia, um, we have an opportunity to really drive growth in this segment. You know, we know how important the segment is, um, and historically, we know that there were over 300,000 working holiday maker arrivals into Australia each year, with the UK, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and France the largest contributors of that working holiday maker segment to Australia. The key to helping Queensland's um, supply chain challenges and workforce shortages um, being resolved and therefore a focus on this segment um, is really important for us because we understand not only uh, are the working holiday makers valuable from a, a tourism sector uh, perspective, but they provide an incredible overall economic input to the community as well through you know, their their, their input into the work and labour force as well. So with TA investing over $3 million to build global working holiday demand to Australia, we're looking to leverage this investment through key partnerships, um, targeting global working holiday makers in those key prioritised markets. Um, and then TEQ will also come into market with a bespoke initiative um, to build aspiration for working holidays in Queensland. Intercept in market, um, those working holiday makers. And whilst that work is still in development, we look forward to being able to share further detail with you on that very, very soon. But it's an exciting opportunity. You know, we recognise the role that working holiday makers have to play in our overarching tourism economy. And we're looking forward to being able to drive and support initiatives that provide the opportunity for working holiday makers to get back to Queensland as quickly as we could possibly can make it happen. I'm gonna hand back to Rowena now um, to talk a little bit more about our trade engagement activity. Thanks, Michael. There's lots of opportunities coming up for trade engagement. Um, to start with ATE 2022, which is set as a hybrid event in Sydney in May this year. Some 118 registered Queensland sellers will be ready to welcome back international friends and buyers to Australia now that the borders are open. Having talked with a number of our partners re recently, I can also report that they're pretty excited to come down under and have a beer with you also. Hosted trade and media for mills are in the planning, as Michael said, um, which will give our partners and media friends a comprehensive insight into Queensland product experience and destinations um, that have also changed over the last two years. But it is important to note that trade for mills will not come back instantly. It will be difficult to justify extended stays out of the office as partners um, work hard to rebuild their business. Uh, we, um, so we're expecting these opportunities will be in the latter part of the year. In market missions, TA will soon be announcing marketplace dates, which will be closely followed by TEQ in market missions. TEQ has appointed a trade and events engagement leader, Claire Sim, who some of you will know, uh, who will be heading up and leading our international trade events uh, reopening. Trade training webinars and events, there's been a lot of these and there's a lot happening in this space. TEQ has worked really hard with TA to maintain the relationships with qualified travellers agents and the Aussie specialist uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, ATEC has launched a two-day virtual B2B event which will be held on the 6th and 7th of April in 2022, which will also allow you to re-engage with ITOs. Um, just a quick note that registrations close on midnight on Sunday the 6th of March, so make sure you get in quick to register. If you or your partners are looking for inspiration on social assets, don't forget that TEQ has a range of trade assets and resources. Just head to teq.queensland.com industry resources. Tourism Australia also has a number of trade resources which can also be accessed through their website, resources.australia.com. So the opportunities um, and how can you leverage what we are doing? There's a few ways to ensure you're ready to leverage the work we're, we're doing in international markets. Um, first of all, we've had a lot of feedback around weight rates, so check your rates. If you're internationally ready product um, and you're looking to re-engage with your contracted ITOs and OTAs as part of your international marketing plan, ensure that your rates are loaded and can be released to partners. Parts of, partners have told us they're, se they're seeing spikes in demand, but products are slow to contract. If you are interest internationally ready, send your product news and updates to trade it queensland.com for the opportunities to feature in our trade newsletters and updates and fact sheets as we uh, hand them out across our international markets. 
Stay up to date on news and events and workshops and resources from TEQ by subscribing to IonQ, our weekly industry newsletter where all the trade news is featured. Attend trade training and events. To find out about our industry events and opportunities led or supported by TEQ, visit our industry events and opportunities calendar. Queensland products can also get involved directly with Aussie Specialist Program. Um, many of you may not know, but it's a, it's a great program where um, you can look to add incentives to the reward store and invite Aussie Specialists to try your product or visit your region the next time they travel to Australia by offering an industry rate on travel, tours, accommodation and attractions or simply just um, load up a product update. Frontline travel sellers are looking for on-demand travel videos. Be sure to upload a short and sharp training video around five minutes in length to your listing. This is a great way to provide travel agents with a virtual tour of your product um, like you would face-to-face -face at a trade event. But importantly, if you've got any questions on any ways that you want to leverage, um, just reach out. Uh, email us at trade at queensland.com. Moving on um, to the following few slides, I'm going to try and endeavour to talk to you about the proposed partnership activity in each priority market. Um, and I present this on behalf of my colleagues in international markets. They've actually been the ones doing all the hard work. The partnerships include both TEQ Direct and TA1 Voice Partnership planned activity. Some have been confirmed and as Michael said, some are in the planning stages. Since the pandemic, our integration with TA in market has never been stronger and our recovery relies on both direct and indirect partnerships. I'll not run through each slide in detail, but I'll attempt to give you a quick snippet of the partnership landscape. These partnerships will be available on our corporate website as they are confirmed. So let's talk Singapore. Singapore will have a greater willingness for product innovation and longer stay itiner itineraries. Travellers are likely to be more affluent travellers in the early stages as they'll be more inclined to make bookings through preferred agents and pay slightly more in exchange for ease of mind and options to call agents as things change. Dynasty Travel was one of our major KDB, KDP partners who's been sold at, uh, in this time to travel curators and will be moved to a tech online company focusing on luxury travel. So we're watching this space with interest. Kluke gained familiarity as they were appointed one of the Singapore platforms to redeem the Rediscover, Rediscover Singapore vouchers. Kluke dominated the staycation redemption space, which ended in on the uh, at the end of the year and have now moved to one of the top five OTAs. Japan. Prior to COVID, traditional KDPs in Japan accounted for more than 70% of the holiday bookings to Australia. Moving to a post-COVID, we just aren't 100% sure, sure what's, what recovery will look like. Japanese travellers are cautious, uh, as we know, but we feel more confident booking through a trade partner rather than going with an OTA while COVID and travel, proce travel procedures are in place. Consumer experiences have also changed. JDB, for example, will no longer have paper main brochures and intend to focus more on dynamic packaging online with in-store digital and iPads to assist retailers aligned to both staff challenges and sustainability. Korea, a number of partners in Korea have been investing in technology during COVID. Requests have come through to update their packaging to respond to consumer needs for more off the beaten track itineraries. The trade landscape, however, remains consistent in terms of key players. From an OTA perspective, KK Day has grown in prominence during COVID. Historically, the UK is trade led is a, is a trade-led market due to the complexity of, of Australia as a destination. Travel agents are increasingly important while the industry has suffered losses and the destination landscape has consolidated over the past two years with STA, Travel, and Travel2, trade continues to be key. Staff members have reduced and those who were product managers for Australia and New Zealand are likely now covering many other destinations. Since borders have opened, um, bookings have spiked and partners are, are uh, reporting strong inquiries, which is really exciting. Across uh, to North America, with many of our operators in North America being Australia only focused, it's been an exceedingly challenging period for many of the key distribution partners that we call our friends. Aussie focused partners all reinvented and branched out contracting and selling other destinations across Europe and Africa awaiting our opening. Our KDP friends have reported good inquiry and excited to be back selling Oz. We've heard about 
we have heard reports that still need to be validated that airline capacity for Australia is at 53% of April 2019 levels. So this is a really great start to borders reopening. When Qantas comes back flying their A380s, it'll be really help our capacity um, as we open up to go into the US summer. And finally, Europe. Historically, all key European markets are trade-led market due to the complexity of Australia as a destination again. Like the UK, travel agents are increasingly important. However, the likes of Tourlane are gaining popularity. Majority of the specialist trade partners have expanded their offering and focus to other destinations. So destination competition from traditional Aussie specialists will exist in a time. So it's now time to reach out and remind, remind them that Queensland is the best address on earth. We're really excited for Monday when borders open and can't wait to welcome back our international travellers back to Queensland. I'd now like to hand back to Michael and thank you all for your time. Thanks Rowena, thanks for a great um, insight into the international um, trade and aviation space. We've certainly seen a lot of changes there um, throughout the course of the pandemic and no doubt there will continue to be changes as we look to reopen. Um, but rest assured, we're keeping in touch. We are in constant contact with these uh, trade partners and looking to do our best to gain and have a thorough and strong understanding of that ever evolving travel and trade landscape. It's really important to us. Um, from your point of view, it's also really important too to be able to understand and respect that there are differences in the way people want to travel moving forward, the types of experiences they're looking for, the way they may contract or look to or develop itineraries as well. For us, with Monday coming around, our content themes are something that you can really help us with. The message is coming back from our key international markets and the media and trade in those key international markets is there's probably four key themes that are really talkable and newsworthy from their perspective. And we really rely on you as our industry partners to help us with that information. Things that are really newsworthy and talkable in the key international markets at the moment you know, revolve around the themes of uh, say what's new. Um, what have, what's changed? What's different? What's new that they can actually talk about and announce or, or, or create a story around at this particular point in time? The theme of sustainability is certainly coming through um, in all international markets and therefore our media and trade partners are looking for those stories and those um, opportunities to elevate um, sustainability credentials and also experiences which have a strong um, sustainability outcome and that leans in really nicely to our future approach around the travel for good brand proposition. Seasonality has never been more important as well. Um, the idea of escaping and doing that greatest of all time trip to a destination can be driven around a major event in life and therefore mess seasonality messages and seasonality opportunities to develop experiences that really lean into that um, are really important too. We've got no doubt that multi-generational travel will be important moving forward again and therefore the celebration of major life events and the opportunity for us to build experiences that really capitalise on that and showcase how Queensland can, can deliver a once in a lifetime experience for many people um, is really, really seen as being something important from a newsworthy point of view. And we've loved those wow moments. You've been great at feeding us through those wow moments through the pandemic. These are the things that capture the attention of global media and we just need you to keep feeding them through to us. Um, we've generated millions and millions of dollars worth of global publicity exposure through these wow moments across the course of the pandemic. Uh, and we know that Queensland will never run out of wow moments to deliver. So please keep feeding them through to that email address there, media at queensland.com. Super important. From your own point of view, there's just a number of things that we think are really important with your own social media channels to now be focusing on as we look to reopen internationally as well. Consistency of posting is really important. Um, developing and getting back into a really strong routine of being consistent on social media um, has been really is really important. Um, the cadence of that, you know, make sure that you're a regular poster across the key channels, both Facebook, Instagram, but also if you are more geared towards an Eastern markets approach, you know, the relevant um, social media platforms in those markets as well. Um, ensure that the content you post is valuable to the consumer as well. Make sure it can be entertaining and helpful. Um, also, be sure to focus on high quality photos and videos. Uh, the engagement that we receive on Queensland.com and through our channels, um, Facebook, Instagram and other social media platforms is driven by the quality of photos and videos we publish and we see it and we can measure it. We know the better the quality of the image, the better the quality or the, or the insight that comes from the video, the more engaging that content will be. 
When you're doing so, um, make sure you tag at Queensland and use the hashtag, hashtag this is Queensland and hashtag see Australia on all of your activity, because that ensures it gives us the best possible chance of being able to pick it up um, and also repost and reshare that activity as well. Um, and then think about linking consumers to visit your website from your social posts to drive bookings. We've got no doubt that there will continue to be a shift over the period of time about where bookings come from. The trade and our partners will continue to be the core source um, internationally of that booking activity and behaviour as we've seen and you know the role of the travel concierge and the travel strategist which is in terms that we really love um, but there is a growing trend internationally and globally that we're just monitoring about um, a, a direct booking approach as well and an and, and activity that's really designed around that and then consider inviting investing in paid media to connect your message with new audiences as well We've seen the impact of that and as we reopen, we'll certainly be looking to utilise our own social media platforms and channels in those key international markets um, through an investment in more paid media to drive greater reach and hopefully greater engagement too. There's a lot to go through today. Hopefully you've stuck with us, but there is more to come and we're really excited. You know, we're looking forward to Monday, but we're more so looking forward to the months and, and, and time ahead. From us, some of the things you can expect uh, some regular updates um, as these programs of work and the information we've shared with you today um, continue to develop. More deeper information on things like missions and for mills and those partnerships that you can access and, and, uh, and join into with us. We're looking to develop and come out to you with a market information series. Um, so as you can hear from our global teams about the direct insights from their own markets. We've been in regular contact as have uh, our RTO partners with our global teams and the insights that they've been able to share have been incredibly invaluable in terms of us shaping our reopening plans. Some in-region roundtables um, are planned as well. We'd love to get back out into region and engage with you and talk to you about your needs and your, what you see as being the key opportunities as we recover and we reopen in our key international markets as well, so as we can make sure that all of this activity is aligned. We've got a new trade resources website going live in April, which has an incredible wealth of information there. Um, and we look forward to being able to launch that to you in April. So as you can also have a look and understand what's available on there through our new trade and corporate website. And excitingly, as we move beyond the reopening phase of our activity and the you good to go to Queensland message, the chance to take our Travel for Good Evolve brand proposition into the market to make sure that we can move to a more purposeful message um, and excite those global travellers about the opportunity of coming to Queensland and having an incredible ex Queensland experience once more um, is top of mind for all travellers all around the world. As, as I said, a lot to get through today. Hopefully you've stuck with us. Hopefully you found this information incredibly valuable um, and important. We're keeping the chat and the question line open for another 15 minutes. If you haven't had, if you have a burning question or you have some information you'd like to share with us, that, that chat line is open for 15 more minutes because we know, you know, sometimes uh, you can you can have a question, you don't get a chance to ask it. So 15 more minutes to do so. But also please feel free to reach out to any of us if you do have a question or you would like to touch base in the weeks and months ahead as well. Thank you for your time today. Uh, thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Rowena. Thank you, Minister Hinchliffe as well. Um, it's been great to have you all here uh, and we look forward to talking to you all again soon. Have a great weekend.